Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, I'm going to explain you about special type of inflorescence. So we know that normally there will be three types of inflorescence. They are Cyathium, Hypanthodium and Verticillaster. So coming to the first one, Cyathium type of inflorescence. So I am not going to read the definition now. After the explanation of the Cyathium inflorescence, then I will read the definition so that you people can easily understand. So coming to the explanation of the Cyathium inflorescence, normally at the in this in this type of inflorescence at the surface region nectar gland will be present. So I, I didn't draw the nectar gland here. At the end of the video, the original diagrams, I mean the photograph diagrams will be present. And there you can find the nectar gland. And the nectar gland will be like a yellowish color in such a way that what is the main function of this nectar gland is that it mainly helps in the secretion of sugar, sugar rich liquids. And this sugar rich liquids mainly helps in the development or as a growth of the flower or as a, or as a fruit. Okay. So normally uh, this Cyathium inflorescence you can see in Euphorbaceae family and normally in this Cyathium inflorescence female flowers as well as the male flowers will be present right and this is a female flower if you see this is a female flower and this female flower is surrounded by the male flowers all of these are known as male flowers which I have represented here so if you see the single female flower will be present only one long female flower will be present and highly reduced female flowers will be surrounded to it Surround, surrounded to the female flower right and normally this uh, female flowers as well as this male flowers will be present it uh, will be present in the all of bracts and now these bracts will get fused with each other and forms cup shaped involucre so this is the cup shaped involucre so before entering into this stage uh, normally bracts will be present like this bracts will be present and the bracts will get fused with each other and forms cup shaped involucre so within this cup shaped involucre female flowers as well as the male flowers will be present inside it Right, and next one is it is uh, in this inflorescence uh, it undergoes a chlamydia. A chlamydia eclamidus is nothing but the, where the calyx and corolla will be absent. What are calyx and corolla? These are called as accessory walls, right? And I will make the I will make another video on this calyx and corolla. But only the one thing which you have to remember is that a chlamydia is nothing but calyx and corolla will be absent. There's nothing but accessory walls will be absent then it is called as a chlamydia's condition. Chlamydia's condition is nothing but when the calyx and corolla will be present, then it is then the condition is said to be as chlamydia's. And next one is unisexual. Unisexual is nothing but which consists of female flowers and male flowers, where the female flowers will be uh, identified as stamens and the male flowers will be represented, sorry, male flowers will be represented as stamens and the female flowers will be represented as pistil. So this is a, uh, this is a, this is a male and this is a female. So this is about the Cyathium inflorescence. So coming to the definition of the Cyathium inflorescence, it is an inflorescence consisting of a cup-shaped involucre. So this is a cup-shaped involucre which I have said you right, which will be fused by, uh, which will be how this cup-shaped involucre has been formed by the fusion of these bracts. Before entering into this stage, the bracts will get fused with each other in such a way that the cup-shaped involucre will be formed. So it is an inflorescence consisting of a cup-shaped involucre enclosing an apetalus. So I uh, hear apetalus nothing but petals are absent, right? So only one, uh, you know, it is it has been fused. It has been fused and form a cup-shaped involucre. So petals are absent. So uh, it is called as apetalus and pistillate flowers surrounded by the several staminate flowers. So here pistillate flower is nothing but female flower and staminate flowers are nothing but male flowers. So pistillate flower female flower is surrounded by the staminate flowers, male flowers. So this is the definition of the Cyathium inflorescence. Hope you understood it. And coming to this Hypanthodium type of inflorescence. So if you see in the case of this diagram of the Hypanthodium inflorescence, uh, in this in this type of inflorescence, at the at the surface region, sessile flowers will be present. So if you see here, all of these are called as sessile flowers. And sessile flowers are of three types. They are male flowers, female flowers, and sterile or neutral flowers. And it is also called as gall flowers, right? And normally, uh, have have separated the sterile flowers from the female flowers only. But the female flower considers this sterile flowers. I mean, only two classifications of sessile flowers will be present. They are male flowers as well as the female flowers. But these female flowers are of two types. They are fertile female flowers and sterile female flowers. Fertile females I have represented normally like this. And uh, sterile females I have separated. Okay. So, in this diagram, you can clearly understand what I am saying. So, uh, the male flowers are nothing, normally, this hypanthotium type of inflorescence, you can see in ficus variety of plants. And normally, uh, you know, this is uh, this is represented as male, right? And the male flowers are represent are presented at neck region, which are represented as stamens. So, all of this blue color one which I have drawn are called as male flowers. And these are presented at the neck region. And these are represented as stamens. 
So coming to the female flowers, these are present at the lower side and which are represented as pistil. This red color one which I have drawn are called as female flowers which are represented as pistil. So coming to the third one, sterile female flowers are present between the fetal, fetal female flowers. So this black color one which I have drawn here, all of this black color one which I have drawn are called as sterile female flowers. So where are the sterile females are, female flowers are present? These are present between the fertile female flowers. And the best example for this type of inflorescence of hypanthodium are banyan and people. So now coming to the definition, in this type of inflorescence, the receptacle becomes spherical. So this hole is known as receptacle. And, I I, and if you see here, uh, this is not a spherical shape, but if you see the original diagram, which will be presented at the end of the video, and in that, in that picture, you can see the uh, receptacle will become spherical in shape. And in that spherical in shape, cavity will be present. So this is known as cavity. Okay. And within this cavity, these uh, flowers will be present. And, and forgot to tell you one thing that there will be an opening which will be present in this type of inflorescence and that opening is called as osteole. And coming to the poll at the side of pollination, I am going to explain to you about the pollination in this hypanthodium. Normally, when the uh, normally pollination is nothing but the eggs will get fused, right? And the eggs will when the eggs will fall on this fertile, uh, even norm, for, for example, if you take the gall flowers, the black color one which I have drawn are known as gall flowers. So when the eggs falls on this gall, gall flowers, then what happens is that pollination occurs. But when the eggs falls upon this fertile female flowers, then what happens is that cross pollination occurs. So remember this both. So when the flowers, so, sorry, when the eggs will fall on this gall flowers, it occurs pollination process. When the eggs fall upon the fertile female flowers, then it occurs cross pollination process. Okay, so this is about the pollination in this hypanthodium. Coming to the third one, what is elaster? It is an inflorescence in which the flowers are arranged in a seeming bowl consisting of a pair of opposite axillary sessile signs in many units of means. And to, ex to know about the explanation of this vertical ulcer, you have to know about two types. Two types of signs. They are biparous and uniparous. Biparous uh, exhibits dicacial sign and uniparous exhibits monocacial sign. So, in many books, you have seen this type of diagram. But I'm in this video, I am going to explain you another diagram also for your better explanation. So, if you see here, if you consider this as a main axis, if you consider this as a main axis, two branches will be arranged like this. Two branches will be arranged. I am saying only in this type of inflorescence, in this type of vertical aster inflorescence only. So this is a main axis. So to this main axis, two branches will be arranged with the pencil I have drawn, right? Those are called as two branches. And remember here, you can see properly here and the two branches are opposite in direction, right? And even if you see this blue color, branches are also opposite in direction. So when these branches uh, which will be arranged in the opposite direction, they are called as biparous. So this blue color one which I have drawn are called as biparous because they are arranged opposite in direction. So coming to the uniparous, how can you can identify this uniparous is nothing but this uniparous will be uh, arranged from the uh, biparous branch only like this. It will be arranged but this will not be present in opposite direction because it will be overcome from the same previous branch only. So like this one branch will be arranged. So upon the branch only another branch will be arranged like that upon those branches only overcoming. But if you see in the case of biparous, it occurs upon the single one, single uh, branch like this. It occurs in the opposite direction. But if you see here, it doesn't occur opposite direction. It comes, it overcomes like this. It overcomes like this. This is called as biparous. When 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 it is called as biparous, when the when it uh, when the you know when the developing of the branches occurs in opposite direction, then it is called as biparous. Whereas if you see in the case of uniparous, uh, it doesn't occur in opposite direction. That's nothing but it gets overcome from the, its previous branch. Like this, this is one branch. Then it it overcomes upon the same branch. I mean, uh, another one, another branch will be arranged upon the same branch, and another branch will be upon uh, will be arranged from the same branch. Like this, when this get arranged on the same branch, then it is called as uniparous condition. Whereas uh, in the when it gets arranged in the opposite direction, then it is called as biparous. Right, so this is the uh, this is a one important thing which you have to remember in the vertical elastor type of inflorescence. So for your better understanding, in the case of another diagram, so if you take this is a main axis, this hole is a main axis, and this blue color one is nothing but biparous because it is a this uh, branches which has been arranged are opposite in direction. Here also these are arranged opposite in direction, but if you see in the case of monoparous, these are not opposite in direction. These are overcome upon the same one. Okay. So hence, uh, the, this is called as vertical aster. So coming to the examples of this vertical aster, salvia, osimum, leucus are the best examples of the vertical aster. So now let us see the original diagrams of this type of inflorescence. 
So this is the best example of this hyatium inflorescence and if you see in this case of flower in this type of inflorescence what I have said you nectar gland will be present which will be represented as yellow in color right. So if you see in this diagram this flower consists of yellow in color right uh, yellow color yellowish color like substance right and those those are known as nectar glands and this glands helps in the secretion of sugar rich liquids which mainly helps in the growth of this flower okay. So coming to the second one hypanthodium right and in this type of inflorescence what I have said you uh, in this type of inflorescence the receptacle becomes spherical in shape right so if you see here properly you can understand but in the case of diagram I had not drawn spherical in shape because for your better understanding only and if you see here this will be a spherical in shape and within this uh, spherical shape uh, you know receptacle sessile flowers will be present I mean male female sterile uh, I mean gall flowers will be present okay so coming to the third one which I have said you what is a last and for and the best example of this what is a last inflorescence is tulsi leaves